So you're letting me in the kitchen again. I am shocked that you agreed to do another baking show with me <laughs> while you're in my kitchen. So the resurrection bun cake, it came for our first time. For our first time, it came out great. <laughs> okay, I can say that now. So today we are going to make a uh, little resurrection rolls, which are just a fun treat for Easter morning. I can't believe we're gonna improvise again. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> but when I was uh, ordering marshmallows through the app, um, I came across a few other marshmallow products. And so we're just gonna <laughs> give it a go. It's fun that we can share these moments together. And maybe that's like a new kind of cooking show. Like, hey, we're just gonna wing it. Right. <laughs> we're just gonna throw peeps inside it and see what happens. <laughs> peeps inside of anything. Are you, the fact that these peeps made it to today yeah. and into this <laughs> container is a miracle. They have been in my van and I have not eaten them and I just feel very proud of that. Um, these also look fantastic. These are other little marshmallows from Target. Okay. And so we are just gonna wrap everything up in crescent rolls. I mean, normally you just take a regular old marshmallow, s'more style, you roll it in a little butter, roll it in a little cinnamon and sugar, wrap it in a crescent roll. When they bake, the marshmallow melts away so it disappears. And then, so you have kind of like an empty tomb. Which yeah. is, I think just for Easter morning, it's a really fun treat. I actually hadn't heard of these before. I don't know. When we were you collecting- You can't be in, in the homeschooling circle for oh, a long okay. time. I've seen <laughs> But when we were collecting ideas for Easter, there were yeah. so many good ones, and this one, I think, yeah. topped the list. So now we're gonna find out what happens if you wrap a peep in a crescent roll and one of these little gems, a chocolate-covered <laughs> marshmallow, and how that comes out for Easter morning. All right, here we go. Okay, so we have our prepared baking sheet. All right, you get that. I'm gonna pop this bad boy open. Oh, the yeah. oven has been preheated to 375. 375. Okay. What could go wrong on this one? I don't, I mean, very little. I'm, a, I'm kind of envisioning the color from the peeps like leaking out all over, maybe. Okay, I don't know. All right, so you go ahead, grab that butter and sugar, and you oh, start yeah. rolling these little marshmallows. So I'll do the regular ones? Yeah. All right, so into the butter. Oh, this is me, messy. Okay, good. A little bit, I want you to throw it on. Into the cinnamon and sugar. I can't believe you're trusting me to do this. You're, you're wanting to tell me that I'm doing something no, wrong. No, I, I have no <laughs> concept of these, so. All right. Someone else can tell us we're doing it wrong. I don't think you have to wrap up the ends. I think you can just. No, no, don't wrap the ends. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, you're doing it like a croissant style. Yeah, that's what you were supposed to be I doing. don't think so. Do you really think that's what you're supposed to yeah, do? Yeah. I. It's going to just spread all over the pan. That's the idea. Like, you want this to just be a cute little croissant looking thing. Well, I thought in here it just melts in the middle. Okay. No, I, again, Dawn hasn't seen the pictures, right? Have you? I have. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, maybe right. I'm doing it wrong. I thought you just kind of wrap it up like a croissant. Like I didn't think you had to tuck it all in. So I think this is hilarious that I'm trying to do a baking show and I've never done this before. Right. I don't know for sure. But you're sure. very confident. I don't know for sure if you're supposed to tuck the ends in or you're supposed to leave it like a croissant. So we'll just do it. We're going to bake these and we're going to see what happens because I have no idea. Okay. All right. How long? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so they're done. Do you think that real baking shows they have someone like making sure, like quality control, like making sure like that you know they're doing so it like right. they're like the Pinterest recipe? No, it's tuck in the end. Or do you think now end. like they put it in the oven and it's not like a producer takes care of it and then like checks on it? Or do you think? And we go do our makeup now? Yeah, or, what, or drink a diet coke? I don't like. What do we get to do now? Okay, clean up, I guess. I, you know, I just, out of curiosity, <laughs> I was curious, like, do you tuck in the ends? Do you not tuck in the ends? So and you actually read the recipe? Kind of looks um, like they tucked the ends in there. Shoot. It's gonna be fine, it'll be fine. They'll be fine. Okay, so clearly I should have read the recipe a little closer before <laughs> we started trying to instruct everyone on things we've never done before, but the timer went off, so. 
That's I think awesome. you gave me, I think I gave you a B on our last adventure together, and I think I give you... This one's perfect. Okay. Uh, so I get to grade you now on this? Okay, so Dawn has one here that is literally perfect. perfect. I think the other ones I should have just tucked in the ends a little tighter, and they would have been perfect too. And I shouldn't have tucked in the ends at all. I'm curious about peeps. Uh, we're going to try one more batch, because I love the idea of a peep wrapped in a crescent roll. and. These, the chocolate really ones, good. look fantastic. If you would have tucked the ends on these, I think that, I think that would have been, been perfect. Fantastic. Like that would have been the clear winner. So I think moral of the story here is I do think experimenting with other types of marshmallows, totally a good, good idea. <laughs> uh, just make sure you tuck the ends in. They are empty. <laughs> Peeps are one of your favorite Easter candies, actually. Uh, one of the top. Yeah. yeah. And so that's so why it's, it's making me. I'm really excited. Even though the Peep ones didn't, like, they don't look great, yeah. I'm ex super excited to try it. I think it's a little The color hard. is kind of fun. And then if you want to try, you know how Joanna Gaines always, like, eats her own food and then feeds it to all the producers and everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll feed it. We have a group of kids here who look a little hungry. All right, you ready? <laughs> I don't know if the inside's done. Let's try it. terrible. Oh, that, is it? No, I was like, the sugar got like kind of stuck into my teeth. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. I think I should, like string up sugar. I mean, cinnamon and sugar butter. Okay, here, try the, the try the chocolate marshmallow okay. one. That looks good. That's fantastic. And That's it's, it's an empty too. Look. Oh, and it is empty. It smells like a cinnamon roll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Yes. So we did all right? Yeah. Mama did all Mom. right? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's also really good. <laughs> okay, I can't believe that Dawn agreed to do another cooking show with me either. <laughs> and, um, but I needed to be humbled. So this went exactly how it should. I'm still actually really surprised that the peeps didn't turn out. But those other marshmallows were fantastic. So Adeline's actually making another batch quick. I stubbornly had her make another one with peeps. I don't know why, because I don't think it's going to turn out. But... I'll let you know if that experiment works at all. But the other marshmallows were fantastic. So here we are. How fun that Easter is tomorrow and what a great time of preparation that we've had together. I wanna just share a little bit right now of how I feel like the resurrection can help us with any disappointment or disillusionment that we're feeling in, especially in the world right now. Because I know that A, if we're, if we're experiencing personal disappointment, if there's been a loss in relationship or health or a loss at all, whenever we hit a difficult, difficult circumstance, it's okay, it's valid to be disappointed and even to be disappointed in God. Or sometimes it's really hard to consider the suffering that's happening in the world. And it's so easy to fall into despair and say, God, where are you? Like, how is this okay? And how is this, how is a good and loving father in heaven allowing this to happen? And so today we're gonna look at an interesting aspect of the very first Resurrection Sunday. We are going to join the two disciples who were walking on the road to Emmaus. It was probably Cleopas, uh, maybe a friend or maybe his wife, and basically Jesus died. And even though they heard that the tomb was empty, they still were walking away sad, disillusioned, depressed. And I imagine it, you know, like if we've ever left a funeral of someone who's close to us, you leave with that feeling of, I mean, pain and loss and loneliness, but also of just like, what do we do now? You know, we had placed for them, we had placed all of our hope. And it seems like, it seems like the religious rulers won. It, it seems like justice was not served. It seemed like who Jesus said he was, wasn't actually true after all. And so we can kind of identify with the difficult place that the disciples are finding themselves in right now. So I'm going to read from Luke 24. Um, the whole story is in Luke 24, 13 through 35. And so I'm going to kind of skip along through it. So it says, now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. So they had a little bit of a walk ahead of them. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they're like, uh, 
hello, are you the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what just happened? And what things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. I mean, you can only imagine the pain and the loss in their voice as they're recounting these things. It goes on, and then Jesus said in verse 25, he said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. I would give anything to be there for that conversation or to have a video of it. And we could just, I mean, imagine that. We could just use it for all of our discipleship or learning. It will just be like, here's Jesus explaining the scriptures. That would be amazing. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were continuing on, but they urged him to stay. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? So again, here's these poor two people on the road. Jesus had tragically been crucified, and it seemed like the Jewish religious leaders had won. As they walked along talking about these things, a stranger, who was the risen Jesus, joined them, and the text states that their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. The passive voice of the verb suggests that God had closed their eyes, and he didn't allow Jesus to be seen during this time. And then Jesus actually rebukes them for their lack of faith in the scriptures, which spoke of him. And then he recognized that behind their lack of faith was a lack of knowledge and understanding what the scriptures were speaking of. And so the point here is that you can't really properly believe in that which you're ignorant of. And so there's an encouragement here that we do need to understand the scriptures. And I know many of us are trying, and we try to read our Bible, and we try to understand it, and that's why we're all on this journey together. But you also have to have a faith. There is an almost blind aspect of faith. You know, when we receive Jesus as our Savior, we're just simply putting our trust in Him. And so, again, there's encouragement that if you've been disappointed by God, that we will find comfort in knowing and believing who he is as our risen savior. So even though these men, it says that they were disciples, had been with Jesus, they had heard the teachings, they had seen the miracles, and they were probably there when he was crucified, it still seemed that they only had partial knowledge because they said to Jesus, we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. And so even though they also would have been incredibly learned in the scriptures, and especially the first five books of what we know now as the Bible. They would have even memorized it from a young age. They knew the scriptures. They knew the prophecies. They knew the promises because they were expecting Jesus to come in a different way. They weren't actually understanding that the film fulfillment was in their presence. And so Luke is actually using like irony here, uh, since through the cross, Jesus had in fact redeemed Israel. And so in closing, there's a really interesting parallel here. You know, it wasn't until Jesus was sitting at the table with them, offered food and gave thanks, and they ate that their eyes were open and they understood that it it was him. Now, if you go way back to Genesis and way back to the garden, in Genesis 3, 7, it says that the serpent had tricked Adam and Eve into eating the fruit And in 3, 7, it says, and their eyes were opened and they knew. Now, in this sense, that's when sin and pain and destruction entered the world. Now, when the disciples were sitting there with Jesus and their eyes were opened, they knew that this was the Messiah. This was the risen Savior. And this was the Redeemer that they had been looking for. So what an incredible contrast. You know, when Adam and Eve ate in the garden, something was lost. But now when the disciples are sitting with Jesus after the resurrection, their eyes are open to the truth of who he was and to the reality of resurrection life. So today, again, if we're feeling 
despondent about the world, if our hearts are heavy, we can A, look to the scriptures. We can do everything we can to understand the truth that it holds and what it says about Jesus. You know, an interesting thing too, just like these disciples, they only wanted to see and hear the good parts, right? They wanted to read the parts that they understood to say that their Messiah, their Redeemer, would be a savior for, for Israel from all of her oppressors, that he would be a military or a governmental ruler. They didn't understand the parts that talked about his suffering and his dying and his resurrection. And sometimes that happens to us as well. We want to read the parts of the Bible that talk about blessing and hope and fulfillment, which are all true. But you know, if you've ever read the Psalms, especially in a difficult season, you'll find lament, you'll find heartache, you'll find pursuit from enemies and, and then promises of the Lord. But there is suffering in the Bible. There is pain in the Bible. There is darkness. And so if we can have a full understanding of the world that we're living in, but, but if we can let that faith in our resurrected Savior rise up, we can continue to have hope that his kingdom is coming and that ultimately one day all of it and all of us will be restored. So Father, I thank you for this truth. Lord, I thank you for this beautiful parallel that what was lost in the garden by eating, Lord, was redeemed through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And on Easter Sunday, Lord, the day that is the pinnacle of our faith, Father, help us to receive the truth of your word and the reality of our risen Savior anew. Father, I pray that peace would rise up in our hearts. Lord, that we would be steadfast in our faith, knowing that you are good knowing that you are in control and that ultimately, Jesus, you are ushering in your kingdom and there will be a beautiful culmination of this all. So Father, I pray, I pray for those who don't know you. Lord, even this Sunday, that they would come to full faith in you, that they would repent from their sin and they would give their lives to you. And Lord, for those who are coming back, Lord, those who have walked away, who've been disillusioned, their hearts have been hurt on this Resurrection Sunday, Lord, would they re- establish their faith and their life in you. And Father, strengthen each one of us. Let hope rise up and bless us on this Easter Sunday. So I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.